Have you ever had the problem of wanting a specific mold of a specific shape and size and are not able to find it anywhere? Sure, you can search for it on the interweb and you may find it, but it's probably going to cost you about $1,499,000.99. And that's not counting shipping and handling. Now what? Make your own object and then make a mold from said object. There, you got it. Thanks to this clay and this mold putty kit, we can end the problem of not having the right mold. Let me show you how. You will need some oven baked clay. This one is my favorite. And the first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. For this particular shape, the round cutter is optional. You'll need some kind of knife or X-Acto knife, mini star cookie cutters or fondant cutters, a rolling pin, a ruler, some parchment paper along with your baking sheet, and of course, this amazing mold putty kit. My favorite, everything I use is linked below in the description box. You will also need some melt and pour, whatever mica or colorant you're going to use, mini scissors, a craft stick, and a toothpick. So the first thing you wanna do is knead the clay to soften it up a bit to make it easier to roll out. And roll out the clay to the thickness that you desire. I'm just showing you that mine is about an eighth inch thick, but again, this is your mold that you are making, so customize it to your liking. The star was a little bit misshapen, but that's okay. Just go ahead and shape it back up. This is where the biscuit cutter or cookie cutter is optional. If you have a steady enough hand, just go ahead and cut your stripes freehand. I don't, so I'm using the cookie cutter. And here I'm just indenting it because I want little indentation marks in the stripes behind my star. Hopefully I'm making sense. Maybe I'll just let you watch. That, that might be more helpful. Here I'm just trying to see how I want the stripes to come out of the star and then I will cut it and piece them together. I'm measuring the clay to make sure that it is less than one inch thick because I do cut my soap into one inch bars and I want to make sure I'm not cutting into the embeds. taking a toothpick and running it over the indentation marks for a more defined look. Now use a knife or a spatula and carefully transport your clay creation to a parchment lined ratty baking sheet. <laughs> that sheet has seen better days, but that's why it is reserved for my Sophie projects now. And here I'm just showing you a different version of the falling star.
they're all ready to go into the preheated oven. I baked these for about 20 minutes. The package says 15 minutes per quarter inch, but just kind of play it by ear and check on them after 15 minutes. You don't want them to burn. When they're done baking, leave them to cool off completely. Here are the completely cooled clay falling stars. Let's make the molds. This particular kit is a putty kit and I find it very, very simple to use. There's a part A and a part B. You want to knead together two portions that are of equal size. The hardest part about this is guesstimating the size that you'll need for the object. But other than that, this is very simple. You don't have to worry about affixing your object to a container and pouring and all that stuff. It's just simply mixing these two parts together and wrapping it around the object that you are trying to mold. And you have about two minutes to knead it and get it around your object. You let it sit for about 20 minutes and then you unmold the object and it's ready to use. Once you have part A and part B thoroughly mixed, which should take you about 30 seconds, you want to kind of shape the putty into the shape of whatever it is you're molding. For this one, I made an oblong shape because that's the shape of the falling star. And now I'm using my fingers as well as a craft stick to make sure that I'm getting into every little crevice of that star because I want the final sulp embed to look exactly like the clay falling star. There. Now I'll leave it alone for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, I'll make a mold of the other one. Time to unmold the clay objects. Make sure you do this very carefully, just in case you want to make more molds from your object. I can't tell you how many times I've broken the clay and I'm unable to make more molds from it without restarting the whole process over. So be careful while you're unmolding, that way you can make more molds in the future if you need to. This part is optional, but I find it easier to release the melt and pour soap by cutting away the excess putty from the opening of the mold. And now that your mold is all ready, it's time for the fun part. Chop up some melt and pour, melt it in the microwave, add your colorant. In this case, since they're stars, I decided to use glow-in-the-dark mica. You can spritz with isopropyl alcohol and that will help mix in the mica easier. Carefully pour the melt and pour into your molds and if you have any bubbles, you can bust out that alcohol once again and spray away the bubbles. Once the soap cools and hardens, unmold the magic. Ooh, a falling star. And here's the other. Trim away any excess. You see how there's a little bit of excess on the back of this one? Just trim it away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's see if the glow in the dark works. It does, but my camera sucks. And for some reason, it would only pick it up for a split second, but I guarantee you they are glowing in the dark nonstop. Hey, guess what? You know how to make your own molds now. What mold will you make next? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.